I've been doing a study on, the. this is not something we like to hear, but it's about a common denominator to a lot of these fires is a prophecy of the invasion of America. And, and I actually brought a number of prophecies we can kind of look at a little later, but just to look at just the names, you've got George Washington that saw an invasion of America, and he described it as the villages across America. This was before they had cities. Mm -hmm. But he said the villages across America were all burning. That was Which George. would be the cities. Yeah, which would be the cities. Mm -hmm. uh, you have David Wilkerson describing the thousand fires in New York. You've got a man, by the, a Russian by the name of Dmitry Dudeman, and I have his book, Through the Fire Without Burning, and I've got a page I'd, I'd like to share later. But, you know, but yeah. he's talking about, he named cities that God showed him would all burn in a day. That would all burn in a day. You have uh, Rick Wiles. You've talked about the invasion of America and fire. Jonathan Hansen. God showed him that at least seven cities in America would be nuclear bombed, you know, at one time. And there's actually a book that was written on the uh, Hiroshima effect to where there's a plot that suitcase bombs or other type of contained bombs would be moved into uh, cities in America and be discharged all at the same time. Then you have T.D. Hale that had an incredible vision of uh, the invasion of America. Just last week, two people, I've never seen this dream or vision or prophecy, from Kenneth Hagin, and I was a great follower of Kenneth Hagin years ago, and on the same day, two people, one from Canada, one from the U.S., sent me this vision of the invasion of America. And in this invasion of America, what does he say? He says, I saw skyscrapers were burned out halls. Portions of the city lay in ruins. It was not written that just one city would be destroyed, burned, and in ruins, but there would be many such cities. Well, you know, there's, there's also a theme in here that I'm seeing, and that is it is not going to be safe to be in the cities. You know, if you are, you got you to have a plan to get out of the cities. If you're living in the cities, you need to find some relatives, find a part yeah. of a group that you can be a part of that maybe you have relatives in the country that don't get it yet, and you do, and you're buying food, and when, it, when they realize what's coming down, they're going to invite you and your food to come to the country and be part of that group. But make a plan to get out of the city because it's not going to be safe to stay in the cities. Jim, I'm certain you, you knew T.O. Osborne. Yes. Okay. I had him on my show. I, 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 that's what I remember seeing him when I was a young Christian. And I never met him, but when I worked at TBN, when Mrs. Osborne, Daisy Osborne, passed away, and I think that was maybe 1995, 96, a, a rumor went through TBN that Daisy Osborne had a deathbed vision mm -hmm. about the end times. I never heard the vision. I just heard the rumor. Did you hear Daisy Osborne had a vision? Well, nobody ever told me the vision. So years ago, I wrote a letter to Dr. Osborne and I told him who it was and the radio show True News. And I said, sir, when I worked at TV and I heard this rumor that Mrs. Osborne had a vision, did she have a vision? And if she did, would you tell me the vision? T.O. Osborne wrote a personal letter to me and said, yes, my wife did have that vision. And here is the accurate version of it. Um, in a vision, I saw the face of the earth and the changing of the shape of America it was drastically altered and reduced in size through terrible disasters. Hunger and suffering were everywhere. The devastation caused by volcanic eruptions and fires were widespread and horrifying during this Holocaust. I saw Christians clustering together from all walks of life and many denominations. They did not care about their doctrines. The tie that bound them in their desperate hour was their common faith in Christ. Mm. They clung together as though their survival depended on each other. And it did. After it these does. terrifying cataclysmic events, all the evils of sectarianism and apostasy vanished among the Christians. 
desperately struggling to draw strength from one another. And then she talks about how they cast away their sins. A new sense of, of values gripped the believers, okay? And, and then she said, I saw hordes of believers lost among the religious and Christ Jesus rejectors. I saw where mountains were flattened. Believers were fleeing to the desert. I know you'd like that one. <laughs> They're <laughs> fleeing to the desert to take shelter in caves. That's what you just told me earlier tonight. The desolation was so terrible that it seemed no one would be spared. All but a few were full of remorse. Lamentations could be heard everywhere. It was heartening to observe that during the fearsome disaster, unshakable faith held like an anchor among the Christians. They knew they would soon see the sun coming in the clouds of heaven with glory and power. Together as though their survival depended on each other. And it did. After it these does. terrifying cataclysmic events, all the evils of sectarianism and apostasy vanished among the Christians, desperately struggling to draw strength from one another. And then she talks about how they cast away their sins. A new sense of, of values gripped the believers, okay? And, and then she said, I saw hordes of believers lost among the religious and Christ Jesus rejectors. I saw where mountains were flattened. Believers were fleeing to the desert. I know you'd like that one. <laughs> They're <laughs> fleeing to the desert to take shelter in caves. That's what you just told me earlier tonight. The desolation was so terrible that it seemed no one would be spared. All but a few were full of remorse. Lamentations could be heard everywhere. It was heartening to observe that during the fearsome disaster, unshakable faith held like an anchor among the Christians. They knew they would soon see the sun coming in the clouds of heaven with glory and power. T.L. Osborne wrote a personal letter to me and said, yes, my wife did have that vision, and here is the accurate version of it. Um, in a vision, I saw the face of the earth and the changing of the shape of America. It was drastically altered and reduced in size through terrible disasters. Hunger and suffering were everywhere. The devastation caused by volcanic eruptions and fires were widespread and horrifying during this Holocaust. I saw Christians clustering together from all walks of life and many denominations. They did not care about their doctrines. The tie that bound them in their desperate hour was their common faith in Christ. Mm. They clung together as though their survival depended on each other. And it did. After it these does. terrifying cataclysmic events, all the evils of sectarianism and apostasy vanished among the Christians, desperately struggling to draw strength from one another. And then she talks about how they cast away their sins. A new sense of, of values gripped the believers, okay? And, and then she said, I saw hordes of believers lost among the religious and Christ Jesus rejectors, 